our goal is to understand squares. I don't mean geometrically. I mean, what are the squares mod P? Let's let Q and P be primes. And our goal is this question. We want to know when is Q a square modulo P? And I mean that in the most naive sense. I mean, when does there exist an X so that X squared is congruent to Q modulo P? I do have a little bit of terminology that I want to remind us about. So this is a Legendre symbol. It looks like a fraction in parentheses. It's not A divided by P though. It, it's not a fraction. It's pronounced A on P. And it's a number that records whether or not A is or is not a square modulo P. So if A is zero modulo P, then A on P equals zero. But if A isn't zero modulo P, then uh, maybe A is a square modulo P, in which case we say A on P equals one. And if A isn't a square modulo P, then we say that A on P equals negative one. You might think it's a little bit silly because aren't I just recording yes and no in the numbers one and minus one? But there are some real advantages to this kind of encoding of whether or not certain things are or are not squares modulo P. In what follows, we're going to be making use of this theorem that when P is prime, UP, the group of units mod P, is cyclic. We're going to use this to produce elements of a desired order in UP. Suppose that P is prime and that 5 divides P minus 1. So that could be like uh, P equals 11, P equals 31. And UP, the units mod P, that's cyclic. And consequently, if 5 divides P minus 1, then there is actually an element of order 5 in UP. The polynomial x to the fifth minus one, that factors as x minus one times x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. And if we've got an element in UP that actually has order five, well, then that element to the fifth power minus one is zero. It's, it's a root of x to the fifth minus one, but it can't be one. So it, it can't be a root of x minus one. It has to be a root of x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. So we have r, a root of that polynomial, and I claim that 2r plus 2r to the fourth plus one is a square root of five in UP. So I'm claiming that if I take that quantity and square it, I'm gonna get five. So I'll take that quantity and I'll square it and I'll expand it out and I'll get 4r squared plus 4r to the eighth plus one plus uh, two times, well, the cross terms, 4r to the fifth plus 2r plus 2r to the fourth. Now I know that if r is a root of that polynomial, then r to the fifth is one. And consequently, I can reduce those exponents. I mean, I can replace 4r to the 8th with 4r to the 3rd. I can replace 4r to the 5th with just 4. So if we do a little bit of algebraic uh, rearranging, what I've got here is 4 times the quantity 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the 4th, and then plus 5. But 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the 4th, th that's the quantity that's 0 because r is a root of that polynomial. I mean, that's what I picked r to be, this element of order 5. So what this shows me is that that original thing that I squared, 2r plus 2r to the fourth plus one squared, that's five. So what's the conclusion? What have we actually shown? Well, at the beginning, we assumed that p was one mod five, right? So p is a prime, which is one mod five, like 11 or 31. And in that case, we've exhibited a square root of five. We've, we've actually produced an element in up that when I square it, I get five. And that means that five on p is one. So we just showed that if p is one mod five, then five on p is one. But can we go the other way, right? If we know some prime number p and five on p is one, does that mean that that prime number p is actually one mod five? We'll take a look at this example. This is five on 19 and five on 19 is one. Five is a square modulo 19. It's uh, 10 times 10 is 100, which is five mod 19. So uh, the bad news here is that 19 is, is definitely not 1 mod 5. It's 4 mod 5. So I think there's a lot more uh, that we have to do to really understand uh, even the story for 5 in trying to understand uh, what it means for 5 to be a square mod p. What are the primes with that property? Well, here's another thing that should freak you out. I mean, what kind of trick was 2r plus 2r to the fourth plus 1? Where did that thing come from? So in the quest for generalization, what we'd like to be able to do is to uh, repeat this story for a different value of five, as they say, right? I'd like to replace five in the preceding story with some other number and see if I can make any kind of progress. So I wanna play that same kind of game, but instead of doing it with five, I wanna do it with seven. So I wanna suppose I've got a prime P and I'd like P to be one mod seven. So P could be a prime like 29, 43, 71, something that's one mod seven. 
And because I know that up is cyclic, when I know that p is one mod seven, I actually know that there's an element in up of order seven. So I'm gonna call that element r. Now r is a root of the polynomial x to the seventh minus one, but x to the seventh minus one factors is x minus one times x to the sixth plus x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x squared plus x plus one. And, and I know that r isn't a root of x minus one because if it were, it would just be one, but I'm looking for an element that actually has order seven. So it must be a root of that other larger polynomial. So let's suppose that r is that element of order seven and I'm gonna build another element s. I'm gonna define s to be r plus r squared minus r to the third plus r to the fourth minus r to the fifth minus r to the sixth. And my claim is that s squared is negative seven. I'm claiming that I can build an element which is the square root, a square root of minus seven. So squaring s is quite a bit of work, but it's a sort of algebra that we can do. And when we square s, we get r to the 12th plus 2r to the 11th minus r to the 10th plus r to the 8th minus 6r to the 7th plus r to the 6th minus r to the 4th plus 2r cubed plus r squared. And what we immediately can do here is replace r to the 7th with 1 because r is an element of order 7. So for example, I can reduce the exponent on r to the 12th. I can replace r to the 12th with r to the 5th because r to the 7th is 1. Now by combining terms with the same exponent, I end up getting r to the sixth plus r to the fifth plus blah, 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 plus one minus seven. And that r to the sixth plus r to the fifth plus da, 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 plus one, that's zero. So all I'm left with is minus seven. And what we've shown is that s squared is negative seven. We've exhibited a square root of negative seven in up. And maybe this is a bit surprising, but I mean, the actual statement that we've shown then is that if P is some prime, which is one mod seven, then negative seven is a square mod P. Well, why negative seven? Why not just seven? You know, it's a little bit funny that in the case of five, we got five on P is one. In the case of seven, we got negative seven on P is one. You know, what gives? What, what's different here? Our goal is to understand q on p. We want to know what numbers are squares modulo p. And when we're seeing you know, some inklings of this, we're seeing that when p is one mod five, then five is a square, or that when p is one mod seven, then negative seven is a square. But is there a general pattern? Is it possible to determine what numbers are squares modulo p? Is it like the primes where we have to do you know, complicated primality tests? Is there some shortcut to understanding which numbers are squares modulo p? That's a goal for you to explore.